everyone, it's Miriam with a Y, but no E or U and only one A, <laughs> okay? Because the comments can be somewhat entertaining with the spelling of my name. And really, it's funny, but if you ever want to search for a video and you do it with my name, I kind of want you to be able to spell it, <laughs> okay? Okay. Many of you have told me that alcohol inks would be fun to see. So today, we're going to do something a little different. So no acrylics today. Let's make something abstract and fun with alcohol inks. Maybe something colorful, okay? Now, if you're interested in seeing how I make more representational, realist pieces, like these later ones too, let me know that and I'll do those too. I'm also going to ask you to let me know if you would need basic information, you know, like uh, what you can use, what are the differences between the brands of alcohol ink, etc. Or should I just assume that everybody knows how these work and just go from there? I'm good doing it either way. Just let me know what you need. And But for this video, I'm going to assume that you guys do know something and we'll just jump in, okay? For this video, I'm going to be using four Ranger Adirondack alcohol inks. Um, I'll be using the Ranger alcohol blending solution, some 91% alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, a couple of paint brushes, a small palette, and a couple of tools to make dots. I also have some tissue paper on hand to do a cleanup periodically. And I will likely use an airbrush, but you can use a straw. And if you don't have paintbrushes, you can also use Q-tips. Uh, little rolled up pieces of paper will probably do the same kind of job. And the blending solution, you don't need to have if you don't have that. Alcohol will do the job. The blending solution does it better, but I'll show you that along the way. First thing I do is pour, like, a good amount of uh, of the isopropyl alcohol into one of the wells of the palette. And then the other thing I do is add a drop or two of each color into a well. Now, just to let you know, the bottles don't come with a cap with a color on the top. The caps are solid black. What I do is I paint the top of the cap white and then I use some of the ink to add color to the top. It makes it easy for me to find. And like if I have them stacked up behind each other and I can only see the cap, I can still make out which bottle this is. So that's just a tip. And when I work, I have all the bottles open. It just makes that easy because you don't want to have to be taking off a cap and putting it back on every time you want to add a color. And the bottles are designed to not be a problem if left open. So you don't have to worry about your ink is evaporating. The, the little opening here is so tiny, that's not going to happen. So leave them open while you're working. And even if they fall over, it's not going to pour out. And then painting the top of the caps also lets me figure out which cap goes back to which bottle. I'm going to be working on a six by six inch ceramic tile and I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to spread a little bit of blending solution so that when I first put my first color down, it doesn't just dry right away. It lets me, gives me a second to think. find a dark spot like this sometimes I leave them but sometimes I'll just reactivate them and I'm just doing that by dropping some alcohol on them uh, on it and it makes it spread and kind of thin out a little bit the airbrush just helps me 
move inks in a way and also dries them very quickly. I mean, they will dry pretty quickly, but it lets me spread them out. Um, you can use a straw for that, definitely. Now, I like this. I like the airiness of this. And sometimes I'm into the finger thing, but I'm not for today. So I'm picking up some alcohol, just straight alcohol from my palette. And I'm just going to move it around. And you don't have to worry about brush strokes so much if your ink is still really, really wet because it'll, they'll just kind of melt away. See how the brush strokes are gone. But sometimes I like a little variety. See, like I like this. This is one of the things I love about alcohol inks, how they get these sort of darker little areas like that. I think I'm just gonna spread some more patches of color. to the fingers today. Though I don't mind these little spindly ones. I don't mind these little tiny spindly ones that happen. And those happen if I wait until the very last minute before this little area dries the border. If I wait till then and then blow, I'll get I'll get those little spindly guys. Kind of want some purple. Now I could either get purple ink or make the red and the blue cross each other and I think I'll do that and now I've got this all mixed in and since I like the purple I'm Sort of going to make some more. This and the alcohol here, I'm just cleaning off my brush and then I'll pick up some blue, maybe add it to this area. So I want to soften this area here. I'm going to. Put some blending solution down just a little bit and the reason I like blending solution for some things when I put blending solution down it doesn't make the area go white as quickly alcohol will make it go white white and I didn't want that and I'm adding a little bit of yellow and I'll blow it that way and I'll make some things some of these little guys get a little teal going there. I'm waiting for the last minute so that I can get my little spindles. If you do it too soon you get big ones but I want the little delicate ones so I'm waiting for that it was like a magic moment. I'm activating that because I want some little spindlies there. And this is a little darker than I want it to be here and here. So I'm going to do something about those. There are soft patches everywhere. And by soft, I mean like almost white and there is even an actual white spot there and I'm okay with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm using this, um, it's called a ball stylus, I call it the dotting tool, 
but if you were to look it up, it's called a ball stylus, and they come in all different sizes. And I have uh, one that has really tiny, tiny points, like a really tiny ball on the end, and one, this one has a bigger ball, and I'm gonna start working with this one first. I mean, I, there's one that has a bigger still, but this one's big enough. And I'm just gonna dunk this into, well, actually I'll use this, this end, it's a little bigger. I'm gonna dunk this into straight alcohol. And I'm gonna now bring it over to a really pale area and just touch it and just leave it there. And then pull away. And the reason I want a pale area is if I do it in a dark area, when it makes the white dot that I want, it'll, it would make too dark of a ring if I did it in an area like this. So I choose a pale area. And then I'm gonna do it again, because I want this to be, get a little larger. Alcohol just spreads the, pushes the ink away. So I want some white spots throughout so that I can add other colors in them. And I'm gonna put one in the middle of the purple. As long as I don't do it in an area that's really concentrated, it'll have a very thin ring around it. I'll put one here. So I'm gonna make a few more and we'll be back. All right. I've finished making all the white dots that I want. And the last thing I'm going to do is I've added a little bit of alcohol to those uh, drops of color that I had put into the palette just to thin them down and make them liquid again because while we were working, they dried. And now I'm just going to decide where would I like a little bit of green. That green doesn't exist right now. So I'm going to use a smaller point now um, and just touch it into the green and let's say I want green right here. And it's just going to spread a little speck of green inside that white dot. And I'll decide another spot where I would like some How about right here. And then it'll spread and open but not, I don't want it to fill the white spot, just be a little dot within the white spot. And zoom in so that you can see that. Put one right there. And now I clean off my tip to make sure there's no green left on it at all. And pick another color, so let's do red. And let's add a speck of red to this little one right here. Well, that one filled it because it was a really small little space. So let's do some there. And then I'm just going to do that just to give dimension to these little dots. Now to yellow, after having cleaned the tool again. Let's see, about here. And now some blue. And what's fun about um, alcohol inks is that you can just keep using pretty much the same drop of color over and over and over again. Unlike paint, once it dries, that's it. You can't like, you know, if it dried and you didn't get a chance to use it before it dried, oh well, you're out of luck, uh, unless it's watercolor. But um, here, if you're, well, all I had put in here was a drop of yellow. And this is the same drop of yellow, but while I've been working on green and red, the yellow dried, so I added another drop of yellow and another drop of alcohol, and now my yellow is active again, and I can use it where I want it to put it. 
another drop, which was here. Now, if you're wondering, did I need to make the white dot first before adding another color? No, I didn't. I just wanted that look. But just to show you, I could have just come in and made a yellow dot on the blue. Oops, I don't have enough. Without having any white background. The yellow, this is what alcohol ink does. It pushes itself aside. And so if I wanted to add, let's say, a green dot. Where am I going to put a green dot randomly? I wanted to put a green dot right here. The green would work without having the white background. But I kind of wanted the white background just to sort of get, frame them, give them a little bit more life and a brighter appearance, I guess. And since I've done a couple, I'm going to add some random dots that don't have a white border. And I think I want some purple in the last spots that are still white. So I mixed up some purple. I'm going to call that done. A bright and colorful, relatively easy piece to get us started. Let me know what you think in the comments and definitely tell me what you'd like to see. Over the years, I've certainly learned some tricks, tips, techniques, you name it, and I will happily pass them on to you. Okay, give a thumbs up and share with your friends if this made you smile. And remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye now.